this is the example that we left class with on Friday. Um, we have a scene from a movie where a car is driving off a cliff. That's 100 meters high. And there is a pond at the bottom that's 50 meters wide. And we need to know what is the minimum velocity, velocity at which this car needs to be driven off the cliff so that it hits the ground beyond the lake in a fiery crash with the scene from the movie. So I have the situation drawn here. So the car on top of the 100 meter tall cliff and then the 50 meter wide pond beneath it. So we need to know what this initial velocity will be, needs to be. So first we want to define our coordinate system. So what do we know and what do we not know? Well, we know that because it's driving uh, horizontally off the cliff, the initial velocity in the y direction is going to be zero, right? Because it's not moving in the y direction. Uh, we also know that acceleration in the y direction is going to be negative g. We know it's vertical displacement. It's going to come here and it's going to end down here. So it's vertical displacement is going to be negative 100 meters. And if we're just looking for the case where the minimum um, horizontal displacement required, so the minimum velocity, then we're looking for x is greater than or equal to 50 meters. That's, so that's pretty much we know the unknown and what we're looking for is V initial, um, which is V initial X since the, um, since the entire velocity is directed in a horizontal direction because it's driving off this cliff. All right, so what links the motion and the X and the Y together? Well, it's the fact that this car will continue traveling in the horizontal direction with this initial velocity, as long as it's in the air for. So how long it's in the air for is determined by its motion in the Y direction. So how long it takes the car to go in a Y direction from rest to hit the ground 100 meters down, that's going to determine how long the car has to travel horizontally and therefore what speed or what velocity needs to travel horizontally in order to cover the required distance. And so we're gonna to need to figure out time, time to fall. And once we know the time to fall to the ground in the vertical direction, we're gonna know the time it has to travel horizontally. And from that time and the required distance, we can figure out what velocity we need. So the relations, if we have our kinematic equations, have them uh, in your notes. One of the good kinematic equations that'll work is y equals v initial y t plus one half a y t squared. Now, we need to solve for t, and this is quadratic in t, but fortunately, the initial uh, velocity in the y direction is zero, so that term drops out to zero. A y is negative g, so we get negative one half g t squared, and so t equals negative two y over g square root. It's like oh, that's that's a uh, worrisome that negative in the square root, but remember our vertical displacement is negative. So it's going to make that a positive. So it equals, um, so we usually leave it like that for now. So that's our time. We could plug in our numbers, right? It'd be two times uh, 100, roughly 200, 200 divided by 10, or approximately 10, roughly 20 and square root of 20. But we'll, we'll, we'll plug those in 
I'll plug those in later. Um, what we can do is we can just get rid of this negative signs and drop the vector sign. So we know that y is a negative two. So we can just say, instead of writing y in a vector, let's just write two y and just the, the uh, magnitude of y divided by g. And let those negatives cancel out. So don't have to worry about that anymore. Okay. So that's in the y direction. That gives us our time. So now in the x direction, we know that x is equal to v initial x t. And so we can substitute this in 4t. Well, first of all, we're looking for v initial x. So we can solve for v initial. So we get x over t equals v initial x. Right now we uh, can plug in for t. So we have x times the square root. So divide by a fraction times multiplying by the reciprocal. Um, equals v initial x. Right. So now we can plug in our values. And since um, x has to be, uh, is greater than can be greater than 50 greater than or equal to 50 kilometers when we plug in um x is the uh, 50 will be the minimum so v initial x will have to be uh have to be greater than or equal to whatever this term is because if uh x increases vx will increase but if um, x decreases below 50, that would require a decrease in, in uh, v initial x. So we plug in our numbers, 50 meters times the square root of 9.8 meters per second squared, divided by 2 times 100 meters. And so v initial x has to be greater than or equal to that. Do that calculation and we get 11.07 meters per second. That our velocity, initial x velocity, needs to be greater than or equal to. So this car has to be driven off this cliff with the velocity of 11.07 meters per second or greater in order for it to clear this pond and crash on the other side of the pond uh, for the scene. Okay.